The debate about whether circuses keeping exotic animals in captivity is right or wrong is gathering momentum. And circuses themselves are in a situation where they're having to consider their future and how their life could change. Regardless of your position on the subject, circuses are still traveling from town to town, entertaining enthusiastic audiences. Would that all change if the exotic animals were no longer there? Jan is the matriarch of the Stardust Circus, which tours around Australia with exotic animals as part of the show. Her family has been working with the animals for generations. Really a family affair, the whole circus. There are 28 people on, counting all the babies, of course. This circus is family run, and most of them have grown up working with exotic animals. It's a life they've always known, and they treat their animals as part of their family. It's a pretty good life, really. But what's it like to work in a circus with exotic animals? We have the only two remaining circuses in Australia now with exotic animals, and we have both. We have six lions, five monkeys, and that's all in the way of exotics. The others are pigs, goats, dogs, horses. These animals have been born and bred in captivity, so they don't know any other life. So it's not like they've been plucked from the wild and suddenly they're, you know, living this life. It's not that at all. And people don't seem to understand that. They seem to like the life they've got. I guarantee that. The wild isn't as great as what people make it out to be either. In the wild, the lion can live up to 14 years. But at the circus, the lions can live up to 25 years without the stresses that come from living in their natural habitat. Yeah, we treat them like family. They're our, they are our family. When we move to each place, they come first. They're set up before anything else. So to make sure they've got all their comforts of home, the, and even to the point if it's a hot day, the lions have their air conditioners turned on, and if not, they lay out in their yard and snooze all day, and they have a bit of a life of luxury here. <laughs> they don't do any hard work of any sort. And they don't have to worry about where their next meal's coming from. The circus is regularly inspected by the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals to ensure they comply with all the necessary regulations. A lot of councils have banned the grounds for exotics because the animal liberationists tell them so many lies about what we do to our animals, which doesn't happen at all. And they can make up some doozies of, believe me, some of the stories they tell them. And because uh, we'd be in jail if we did half of what they tell them. Jan has bred several lions over the life of the circus, which has provided an interesting story to the tax man. We had um, cubs living in a caravan. They had a little bed under, under the table. And uh, I'd say to them, righto, go to bed. So I had some paperwork on the table. And it was, my husband had had the, the tax return sitting on there. Well, it fell down under the table and it, it got all chewed up by the cubs. We had to send it in like it was, put it in with a little note that these were chewed up by lions, you see. And so I was thinking after it, I bet they thought, well, we've heard everything now, every excuse in the book, this, this one will take the cake. Public safety and the safety of the lions is a high priority for the circus. And there's a double fence around the lion's area for added protection. We have barricades around and all that, and the lions do get locked away at night. We have security right around them with the caravans, so our own people are there all the time, 24 hours a day. And we very rarely ever have anybody come around that want to get in with the lions. <laughs> uh, if they do, they probably get eaten. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Uh, they'll probably lick them to death. <laughs> the lions can be found lazing about in a large, fenced-off, grassed area to the rear of the big top, oblivious to the debate surrounding them. With social change, circuses are now under intense pressure from animal welfare groups that say it's cruel to keep animals in captivity, that they shouldn't be kept in small cages. This is the uh, cages that they can't turn around in. They're not big enough, aren't they, Glenn? Yeah. <laughs> they can't turn around in these. Cramped up in this, this, you, some of it's funny. If, if it wasn't so stupid, it'd be funny, but they come out with some weirdo things. These lions have lived like this since they were born at the circus. 
They have never been in the wild, so this is the only life they know. They are well looked after and safe from other predators and human encroachment to their natural habitat. Matt has worked with the lions since they were cubs, so they have built up an amazing level of trust. He spends up to an hour a day with them, training and the occasional cuddle. You can sense Matt has a special bond with his lions. His partner, Winona, is well aware of the dangers Matt faces every time he goes into the ring with the cats. I feel like he's pretty safe, but it still is a bit of a worry. They are lions, so, you know, you, ne you never really know. Hopefully he's aware at all times of what's going on, so, he's, you know, they do love him, but, you know, sometimes you just never know with animals. Matt has total respect for the lions in his care, and he knows when he enters the training area, there are six lions moving around him. He knows he can never drop his guard around these powerful predators. When you're working with lions, especially if there's more than one in a cage, you need to make sure you know where they all are at all times. Uh, you need to know what, what they're looking at and where, they're, uh, where their focus is on. Their body language is a big thing, so the ears twitching and tail twitching, uh, stance, if they're ready to pounce, if they're not ready to pounce, you know, pretty relaxed. So you just got to watch their eyes. Their eyes is a big thing. Usually you can tell from their eyes what they're thinking. So he's pretty relaxed. He's just watching Bart over there at the moment. But they're all pretty good. They all have their own personalities and, and moods and sometimes they're in a good mood and sometimes they're not. And as long as you uh, are paying attention, it's pretty safe. Hello, boy. He's beautiful. There is a lot of trust between the lions and Jan. Putting your hand inside a lion's cage is something that Jan doesn't like recommend. That, I wouldn't let any strangers do that. We know them pretty well and how far you could go with them. If they were in not in a really flash mood, I wouldn't do it, but that's very rare. But now and again, just the other two bigger males will have a bit of a barney with each other about who's going to be the boss of the females. They are beautiful, gentle animals, and you would probably um, trust any animal, no more than about 95%, but uh, they're just like it. So a dog even, who knows if a dog could ever turn. So far, the lions have been relaxed, but there is a change in mood in the training area between two of the males and we get a glimpse of what lions are capable of. There's always that very, very, very slight chance, very slight. But so far, they, they've been really good. Hey. Hey! Tell me what I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna get the barney over the girl that, that... Hey! Hey! Stop it! <laughs> Oi! Stop it! Oi! Hey! 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 Stop it! Stop it! They have a little barney every now and again. They don't do any damage to each other. Uh, just for something to do, I think. <laughs> After the dust has settled and the brief altercation is over, the victor lies next to the female, while the jilted male looks across. Today, mating season has a winner and a loser. He's a pretty good-natured lion hawk. He's very, very calm and relaxed, usually. Does not much scares him, so that's always a good thing. Some lions are very jumpy, which makes it hard to work with. Usually if they're like this, it's, it's, it's fine, but it doesn't mean it's gonna stay like that. Something could uh, get their attention out there and they could just run to chase that, or you know, someone could bite him on the bum while I'm playing with him. So he's gonna be ready for everything. You all right there, buddy? You all right there, bud? Hmm? You all right there, mister? Hmm? 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 Yeah, you big goofball. You big goofball, ain't you? Yeah, you big goofball. Not everyone agrees that keeping exotic animals in captivity is good for the animals. But Jan maintains they have a good life and are treated as part of the family. Well, this is their air conditioning unit. So uh, on a very hot day, the air conditioning goes on. So they're, boom, up into there and sprawled out. 
They've got little ledges and shelves up in there too that they, they sleep on, they like to go high. We hand raise them. They live in Glen's caravan for the first six months. My wife can't handle the smell. So Glen gets the first six months, uh, which is waking up at three in the morning to bottle feed and, and uh, it's just like having a baby. And then they start tearing up the furniture. And the first uh, probably year we trained out here in the yard just to get all the basics down, like staying on the pedestal and, and stuff like that. So we train out here so anybody can come and watch. Every day it's just playtime in here. Here's just and, mutual and, ground, you know, in there I'm the boss, we do the, the jobs, and out here is playtime, so. It's all reward based, so they know what to do, and uh, they're always wanting to do it before I ask them to, instead of waiting for their turn. So it's, it's, they really want to do it, it's just getting to wait is the hard bit. So they eat out of my hand, uh, usually some nice fresh horse or something. And if they're full, they don't want it, and if they're too hungry, they'll. Um, take your hand with it, so you've got to sort of keep them at that where the stage where they're not hungry but they're not too full to eat. You can never underestimate the power of one of the largest felines in the world. In the wild, they work together to hunt their prey. Lionesses do most of the hunting for the pride, each having different roles and working together efficiently to bring down their prey, using their vice-like jaw to snap the victim's neck and drag it to the ground. The lions might be the resident stars of the circus, but the rhesus macaque monkeys are another exotic that looks cute at first sight, but can attack if they don't know you. Oh, it's beautiful boys, he's a beautiful boy. He's a beautiful boy. The two in this cage are the youngest two that we've got. But they don't take kindly to strangers. They're not an animal that um, anyone could get in with or anything. Don't get too close to them. And they'll grab your glasses off. They're a bit naughty. Especially the people they don't know, more so. We have five now. Two of them really love me. The other three, they, they like me, but not as much as the two. <laughs> I have trained Cleo to do hand balancing, so I work Cleo in the show. Some might say it's cruel to make animals perform tricks, but they are never forced to do them. And if they don't want to do it, they'll soon let their trainer know. They do bite, but everyone knows when, they, when they're out just to make sure they keep away from the people who can't handle them. According to Matt, Reese's macaque monkeys are charismatic, but they also have a vicious streak. So you need to think on your feet when working with them. So you just got to sort of work with whatever they, they're willing to put out. Uh, they have a short attention span also, so you can't work too long with them. So when you're training, you do a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there, and they'll tell you when they're fed up, and so you move on to something else. They get bored pretty quick. This is Cleo. She's an 11-year-old rhesus macaque. She's the baby. Uh, the monkeys are good. There's always a, a, like an attitude from them, so it gives you something to, to deal with. And they only like a couple of people usually, so they, they get attached to a couple of people, and everybody else is sort of, you know, fair game. Cleo here is, uh, she's pretty smart, she knows how to undo the clip on her collar. So it, sometimes in the show when we, just, that we have to, in between tricks, she does just uh, has to wait. And sometimes if you're not watching, she'll unclip herself, go to the table, get a treat, and then uh, head back home, put herself away again. Millie, the, the one in here with, that stays with Cleo, she's got a lot of attitude. She's willing to attack anybody, really. She's just full on. Uh, family more than pets. Yeah, they're part of the family. Uh, yeah, they get all the best of everything. The average macaque can grow up to two feet high and weigh up to 15 pounds. It's a small package, but when aggressive, nasty bites and the risk of disease are consequences of getting too close. Well, they're not really wild. They've been with us their whole life, but there, there is still the instinct in there. Animals don't think like humans. You know, that's where the people go wrong. Animals have their own uh, thought processes and their own and way of doing things. So to us, like something we would think is nice, they think is, is you just letting them do whatever they want. It's showtime and the exotics are preparing to make an appearance to their adoring public. There are preparations that need to happen in the ring to make sure everyone is safe. Into the steel arena, 
Stunner Circus, Australian born and bred, the Falling Lions. Jan and her family enjoy sharing these animals with the public. But today's circuses are finding themselves going through a transition, deciding if they will continue including exotic animals as part of the show or need to bend to the pressures of social change to stop keeping animals in cages. These could be the last of the lions at this circus. They will not be breeding any more of them, so once these unique animals have retired, it is unlikely there will be any bred lions thrilling the audience. Time will tell as to how circuses with exotic animals will evolve under the big top in the years to come. Mm -hmm.